Three months ago, we encased this Little Caesars Hot and Ready pizza in resin. So now we're gonna cut it up and see what the pizza inside looks like. And we're gonna convince Mitchell to do a taste test. We did okay. The pizza itself looks just as fresh as when we encased it, but it has been 90 days. Now we had made this one into a table. The legs off, the bottom side, looks pretty good still too. Some of these screws went into the pizza itself, so there was some air intrusion. Are you still gonna wanna try and taste test it? Oh, I'll eat it. Let's cut it. So, as the nozzle gets closer to the center point, it tries tilting back even further because this bevel is going opposite of that bevel, which makes that point angle extremely sharp, sharper than the water jet can do. So now we're gonna redraw it where this is the opposite bevel, more like a parallelogram, I think. We should be able to finish it. Angles are looking good. It looks, just looks like soggy pizza. <laughs> it looks doughy. But like that resin is up. Is it in, in the pores? The... Yeah, you can tell it's not in all the all the pores, but is that resin it's yeah, that's resin. Oh, there's a it feels spongy right there. Yeah, but it's also resiny. Like that is resin in the pizza. Huh. It's peeling. <laughs> oh, so I can taste it. <laughs> oh. Does it smell bad? It smells real bad. Like like resin and mold. I don't see mold, but... I sure, smell. what's the dark stuff? Give it a good smell. Oh, no. That smells bad. All right, I'll lick it there. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing deters Mitchell. Yep, it's bad. I hope you have diarrhea now. I already did. Well, I think it is safe to say that pizza encased in resin is not good after 90 days. Well, it's not a good way to preserve pizza if you're trying to eat it later. Well, yeah, so now we know. But if you're just trying to look at it later. Yeah. What if we encased it in resin and then put it in the fridge? Maybe that would help. Maybe pizza just isn't good. Maybe we should do chicken sandwiches. Eh? Uh, I like more grease. If we're going to try this again with another food, I think we need to... Consult an expert. Hey, Peter. We went to YouTube resin expert, Peter Brown. Now, unfortunately on our FaceTime call, the audio did not record since because iPhone. <laughs> but I will summarize it. Peter essentially told us everything that we did wrong with our resin encased pizza. And he went as far as to recreate it himself and it looks so much better than ours. I highly recommend you check out his channel and his video. We'll put a link down in the description, but before you go and look at that. So we've still got a ton of resin left over from Stone Coat, which should give us plenty to do four chicken sandwiches. We got the KFC chicken sandwich, Popeyes, Chick-fil-A, and the chicken at Burger King. So we'll encase these four chicken sandwiches in resin and we should leave them sitting for, let's do six months. I'm good with that. See if they hold up any better. Mitchell, I need a promise right now. After six months, will you try the chicken? Um, yeah, I think the bun will be soaked in, but I think the chicken should be resin free and I'll try the chicken. After six months? Yeah, I've preserved for six months, dry aged. We have witnesses. It's our tight, so. King is a little bigger, hence the larger box. Epoxy mold release. Some of these are a little thick, they might take a while to dry, but as am I. <laughs> so that, arch coat. Ah, ah, ah.
notice how the bun is like curved up like that? <laughs> I didn't even notice that. And it's not gonna naturally wanna sit like that. <laughs> been about a week and we have done three separate pours on these chicken sandwiches now following all of Peter Brown's suggestions but we've got a lot of grease that has become what's the word flotatious problematic <laughs> we think that because the resin as it's curing it warms up and we were using a torch kind of uh, liquefied a lot of the oil that was on the chicken sandwich and that just kind of floated to the top so on the bright side, it shows us which sandwich is the least healthy, which is, oh, that's the Popeye's wrapper on the bottom there. Oof, that was the best tasting one too. So we encased four chicken sandwiches in resin and it turns out, we suck. <laughs> I think the resin itself is good. It's just chicken sandwiches are super greasy. I don't I don't know if it's possible or maybe there's different prep work that we could do to make them look better. Maybe we torched it too much, which melted a lot of the grease down. Oh. You know, you torched it too much. You know I like the torch. He did it just for that torch montage. Obviously, you guys can tell that well, maybe you can't. Maybe you just think we're idiots, but resin is hard. Hey, in six months, I'm still gonna taste it. <laughs> we're still gonna wait, sit these on the shelf for six months. We will cut them open and taste them, but if you wanna see some really good resin, go to Peter's channel and he does it better every time. So we're gonna let these sit up here for the next six months. We bought these chicken sandwiches about two weeks ago. At the same time, we bought second one from each place. So these sandwiches have been sitting in these bags for two weeks now. And we'll let them sit for the same six months to see if the resin helps <laughs> or makes it worse. This is the stupidest science experiment it's ever. It's gonna be good. <laughs> Scientific method.